we've signed in. We met all the COVID requirements. <laughs> and now we're following him on his quad bike to our campsite. So we get a personal tour to our site and a personal tour of all the facilities and stuff, which is pretty cool. Yeah. You excited to see our next campsite? I want to know if there's any kids there. Oh, I don't know. Well, there will be come in, Wednesday. Yeah, in two sleeps there definitely oh. will be, but I don't know if there is at the moment. Go back. Yeah. Where you go? Jump up. <laughs> cool, Data. We'll see you up there. All right, we're going to get some water. Get some water. Unbelievable. He seems really chilled out, eh? Oh, as he would be. Yeah. We forgot to ask about water. Hopeless. We're just backing in next to the tank so we can fill up our water. And then we'll drive to the site. Hey, going. We've got our toilet box here, men's and ladies. And this is the hot water system. So because of that fire tonight, I think he called it a donkey, we'll have hot water tonight. How cool is that? Like, just smiley and happy and it's got a good life. That's cool. Hey? Yeah, that's cool. What did you call it? A donkey? It's a donkey. Donkey, well there you go. It's a hot water system. Yeah, cool. They're all called donkeys and you don't overfeed the donkey. Yeah. Well. You turn the water into vapour. Yeah. It explodes. Oh, so true. We got pressure relief now or something. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so we don't have to keep our distance. <laughs> Thank you. Well, hello, camp stay. We're literally in the middle of the bush at Endeavour River Escape. I had to think about that. But it's, um, it's basically like a bush stay. So the guy owns 250 acres of land and he uses... He doesn't use a whole lot. A lot of it he doesn't use because it's a national park. But uh, the small portion that he has here, he's got 25 sites. But because it's such a big area, 25 sites, you think, oh, not that much. But the sites themselves are huge, like absolutely huge. So this is our site. Just quickly, I'll do. I'll try not to spin you too fast. So you get dizzy. So our site starts from this tree here. And this is the way we came in the entrance a little fire pit and this literally all the way around it's the car the caravan and it just keeps going and no one's allowed to come in so that's another campsite just in there it goes in and around there's an old another guy over here with his camera trailer there's even more room in beside that but literally this whole you could fit three caravans in here with ease absolute ease it is humongous. But we are literally in the middle of the bush. Like, talk about quiet. So there's only, there's quite a few people here actually, but you wouldn't even know it. But there's a little van or like bus over here. And there's another one here. And there's another guy over there. But like basically having that many people here, you don't even really notice them. This is what we've been waiting for. like hands down the whole time so cape trip was really good it was right next to the beach had a lot of things going for it but um we basically were set up here and then we had someone right next door to us it's a little bit pokey gets quite busy great spot for a lot of different things but for what we wanted to do we've been in caravan parks ever since covid started um and it's it'd be not it will it's been nice just to have the thought of getting away getting away from other people as bad as that sounds but just to have our own space and really get out and really experience like this sort of this stuff so basically every site that i've seen on the way in has a fire pit so these are really cool so that that's in there permanently but this plate actually flips over I've, got, I've wedged it so it doesn't come over too much, but you can flip it over and it turns into a hot plate. Or you can leave it up and have an open fire. And it can uh, be used as a wind deflector as well as at the same time. So Jada's doing skids in the lawn. I'm going, I'm pushing really hard and going like that and then stopping. Yeah, that's really cool. So she's having a ball out here with the bike. There's just heaps and heaps of room. So yeah, car set up. 
caravan set up. Shah's inside just fixing a few things for dinner. Veggie sides. Yeah. I'm outside with the Ziggy. We got some veggies, potato, onion. We got a one of those woolies set up. Well, we set up um, like slow cooked beef, I think it was. Was it the beef or the pork? I had the pork shoulder. A pork shoulder. It literally, it comes in a bag, take it out of the box, it's in a bag, put a couple of holes in it, and it takes like half an hour. What is it? I think it's a little bit longer from frozen. Um, I don't actually know how long it takes from frozen, to be honest. Well, there you go. Well, when it's defrosted, it takes about half an hour. So it's like a, a super quick, easy, tasty sort of uh, slap together dinner. We've used and them quite a few times, which have been really, really good. And it's no mess as well. Yeah, um, everything's inside the bag. You literally just pull out what you want, put it onto plates, whether whatever you're having with it, and then you just throw out the bag after you finish. So it's couldn't you couldn't ask for anything bloody easier. That's for sure. Mm. Chris just turned the microwave. Microwave. Chris <laughs> <laughs> just turned two the, from two. What's it called? Microphone microphone. Microphone. Because it was facing backwards. Because when I was funny. talking to you and facing away, I wanted you to hear what I was saying. <laughs> then I just realised we're talking to you this way and the microphone's that way. <laughs> so I hope you got all that. Yeah. But yeah. No, it's amazing. It's really nice just to have the space and we mm. can finally have a fire and... Um, oh. And we're off grid. We are off, literally... Off grid and having fires. And this is now the second place that we've been to and there is no... Uh, what's it called? Phone service. Mm. We have no phone service. So there's no internet. No phones, no Facebook, no YouTube, no nothing. So, yeah, it's getting interesting. I thought we'd have service here so I could upload episodes. Now it's like, oh my God, how do we make this work? Yeah. <laughs> but in saying that, it's really nice. Jada's just being a kid. Yeah. Which is cool. Yeah, she's out about, riding around, she's playing with sticks, she's digging holes, like just kid stuff, which is awesome too. But we must be just outside the reception zone because on our way in here, we, um, we had reception pretty much the whole way in. It was dropping away and it was dropping away. And I was like, oh, this is going to be tight. We had one bar left. And then as we pulled in the driveway, we lost it. It was like, we must be just outside of it. So I somehow had a phone call. Yeah, she I had, had some, no service some, yeah. bars, SOS, and someone uh, called me and I could hear her and she's like, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. I'm like, I've got no <laughs> service. Of course you can't. Yeah. Oh, I don't even know how I managed that. And I still don't know who it was. Do you reckon, babe, is there a fire happening tonight? Uh, I'd like to. Got a few things I want to burn off and at least sit around a fire for the time that we've been here. Jade has collected so many sticks for us. Look at them all. We've got to use them, hey. You still need to find a marshmallow stick though. A no. long one. You hadn't thought about that one, had you? No. No. Should be plenty around here, I'd reckon. Well, we can't have a fire if we haven't got marshmallow sticks. What'd you find, Jada? Marshmallow sticks. Yay! Are you gonna have some tonight? Or are you just gonna cook them for everyone else? I'm gonna have some. I'm yeah? gonna have one now. Nah, not yet. You can wait till after dinner. Oh. Do you wanna have a go with the axe, Jada? Yeah. Cut one of those little pieces. You wanna pick it up? And you wanna put it above your head like this? So this is the crucial part now. So you wanna you wanna stand with your legs apart? And what you want to do is you want to come straight down. You want to come, your arms need to come down with you. So yeah. you bring your back and your knees at the same time. No, no. Okay. Yeah. Try again. See where your hands are at? Look at your hands. Oh, yeah. Right. Above you. Bend that back. Stop. All right. It's heavy. Oh my goodness, you nearly got it. Yeah. Right? Okay. I'm just gonna do one of the shoulder things. That's what you've been wanting to do this whole time, hey? Just bend that back. Make sure you bend the back because that's the only thing that's going to save your legs and toes.
Does this look the goods or what? Come and have a look. Huh? Who are you talking to? You. Hey. Yes. Oh, bloody amazing. <laughs> Come and have a look. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> Chris is staring at me, thinking that I'm talking to you. And I kind of am, but I'm talking to him as well. So we've been looking for weeks because Ziggy's have a funny oval shape and it's not easy to fit containers in there. And then of course you need to lift things off the bottom as well, otherwise they'll burn. And we found this from Robin's Kitchen. So it's a granite tray and it's got, if you can see underneath, the little skillet thing in there, which fits perfectly. And, and when you put it in the Ziggy, it fits bloody perfectly. It's amazing. If you didn't, if you didn't already see, but see this thing in the middle? Yeah, and then dinner. Oh my bloody God. <laughs> yes. We're um we're back to our old favourite basically. If anybody knows but, us on a Ziggy, it's what's on the Ziggy tonight? And everyone's like, is that pork? Normally it was, it's but pork. now it is tonight. We haven't done a lot of Ziggy cookups. No, I'm, I'm really really looking forward to it. Well, we've got a birthday coming up in a few days, so we're going to be mm, cooking cupcakes. Yeah, so talk about trying something different. Yeah. Um, Sorry if I got if I got black stuff on my face. No, oh, that's wrong. Yeah, Jack, Jack was playing with cola and he's like, nah, he's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so I thought I'd just show you how well this fits in here and how well it shuts. I'll have to look the product up and I'll put a description, a comment in the description about what it is because I don't know exactly what it is. It's a granite skillet roasting tray. I don't know. It was just what we found at the time. And yeah. It, it was just. But the I will. Manual. I will let you know as well. We were being really stingy, and there was lots of things we found, and we're like, no, we're not going to buy that. We're not going to buy that because some of them were really pricey, and we ended up giving in. So that tray alone was one hundred and sixty dollars. So it was a buy one get one free. But we but, couldn't afford anything to get yeah, free. We couldn't find any freebies because we live in a caravan and we just don't have the space and we didn't need it. So we just talk about it. frustrating. It's like I've just spent one hundred and sixty dollars, and normally it's like holy hell, I've spent this much. But normally, well, for the deal that it was, it was like awesome. We've spent one hundred and sixty bucks. What else can we get? <laughs> and for the life of us, could not find, find something else because being in a caravan obviously is very, very limited. And she's like, keep your receipt, please. If you think of anything, come, come back. back. She yeah. felt bad. Yeah. But she said, oh, these things go on special and you can get them for about $80 normally. <laughs> I'm like, well, that's really great, but we leave town. But I can't town. justify the 160 now because I can't get anything for free. But... No, but we, yeah. we're leaving town and we needed it and we're going up the Cape now. And it was like, well, there's not going to be any Robin's Kitchens in the Cape. So, yeah, I'll show you how well it fits anyway. Is it hot enough? Yeah. Do you want me to hold it? You yeah. It in, or you want me to put it in? And I'll record it? if you want. You can put it in. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. That's the male's job, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, Just put it in. So, if you haven't done, <laughs> hang on before you shove it in. Whoa, settle down. <laughs> if you haven't done a pork roast before, it needs to be super hot. And you need to dry your rind, let it go to room temperature, and salt it. And then you will get an awesome crackling. So, the Every temperature. As all of Ziggy, definitely Ziggy, as far as I've known and what I've tested with pork roast, throw it on a higher setting and just leave it. If it's a kilo, Cook to what the kilo is. If it's one kilo, one hour, two kilo, two hour, whatever the kilo is, cook to what that kilo is and just leave it full ball on high and you'll get the best crackle and the most well-cooked meat you could ever have out of a Ziggy. Mm. It's one thing I've definitely learned out of this thing. So just have a quick look before you open it. So what's that? Above 280. Which is about 290. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, above 280. 300-ish. So it's, it's hot. But have a look how well this tray fits. You ready? <sighs> All right, don't open it again. You'll lose Perfect. the heat. <laughs> we'll um, show you how it's cooking as the night goes on. And oh, one last thing. While I think about it, we're doing a pork roast with steamed veggies and gravy and everything off grid. Hey. We have no power, like nothing. We're totally just running off our own gas and our own knowledge and our own fridge and our own battery. And oh, it's Literally. so exciting. Because all of you out there that keep <laughs> telling us, you've got to get off grid, you're going to love it, you're going to love it. Like, we're loving it and we've been wanting to do this for so long. So, yeah. Oh, oh it's been a passion of ours ever since we got the caravan. That's we've all, just been this, trying this to get moment here. right here is exactly what we wanted to yep. do. 
Hundred percent. This whole trip, and we've started doing it now, four months in, and we're going to do a hell of a lot more over the next couple of weeks, which I'm so pumped for. It's going to be so cool. But it's only going to create more sort of stops like this and stays and locations and everything else and it's just this is only oh, the man. beginning oh yeah we keep saying that and things just keep seem to getting better so obviously it just keeps getting better yeah um the thing that can top 2020 so far will be if wa opens oh we'll see i've got everything crossed for that but right one. now that's cool i'm quite happy being at the endeavor river escape and cooking an off-grid roast yeah it's good not <laughs> so good i just drove out the front of the park so i could get service um, I had like two messages to send and it turns out that I made a spelling error in one of my previous episodes and um, Chris was out today and he came back and told me about it so I had to go out and fix it because I just did but it's still a mistake in the episode which just kills my OCD but anyway so I drove out there and Jada said can I follow on your bike follow you on my bike I said yeah no problem you can follow me so she came out and sat next to the car she got bored waiting for me to do the last couple of things with limited service and so I'm gonna leave. And when she left, she ended up falling off her bike. So she come back, mom! I said, no, oh, you have to wait now. <laughs> so I got back to the campsite. And here's her injury. It's mostly it's wiped up, so it's not as bad as it was. Well, I'm pretty sure that you might have to have an early night now because you cut your leg. No. <laughs> no. She did pretty good. She rode all the way back though, so she's all right. But I did go slow. Yeah. Oh, good. Mesmerized, chewing on a bit of charcoal. <laughs> What's that, Jack? What is it? This is your new TV, mate. Mm. Ooh. Bush TV. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, uh. uh. It's a new lesson, <laughs> isn't it? It's okay. All right. A brand new fun. lesson. You just gotta learn that it gets very hot and you could burn yourself. It's a pretty look at though, huh? So babe. Well, the time has come. Now we're looking. Ooh. Hang on. Crackle. That's how you get crackle. Right, so we bought a generator just before we left Cape Trib. Big reason was because I don't think our solar panels and solar systems working to its full potential. Um, we're gonna look into this a lot more and investigate it just to make sure that it is, and if it isn't, to get it fixed. Because um, when we were at Cape Trib, it wasn't charging as much as what it should have been. But since we've left there and got up to here to Cooktown, it seems to be charging a lot more and doing what it should be doing. So, not entirely sure what's going on there. It might be just us reading it wrong, I don't know. Um, but because of that and going far more off grid, heading towards the Cape, we thought it'd be a great idea just to grab a generator just for the trip. Because um, uh, it only takes a couple of overcast days or you know, too much foliage where you might be pulled up to, to really minimize that power. So having a generator will help us out with that, topping up the batteries and making sure that we've got power there when we're off grid. So we actually got told by the owner that uh, owns Cape Trip Camping, Jackie, because everybody in the Daintree uses generators. And they're like, oh, we got a couple of people down in uh, the Daintree that actually sells them. Oh, Mossman, sorry. There was a Mossman hardware and then there's uh, the mower shop um, and they sell all, everything to do with like generators, whipper simmers, mowers, all that sort of stuff. So we ended up going to the hardware and they sell a lot of Yamaha stuff. And they were a little pricey. So we decided to go down to the, the mower shop just to compare prices and see how different they were. And we ended up with the same size generator for $600 less and it's a Honda engine inside. So really you can't beat that. So this basically has... So this has a Honda motor in it. It's fairly quiet. We've had it running a couple of times just to check it out. But it's a, uh, a lay flat too. So as long as your, your fuel, fuel cap is off, because it's a ventilation thing, your fuel on the side is off, you can lay this down. You can lay that down inside here 
and I can still put all my gear that I had originally in there um, on top of it as well. So, for compact size and transport and living on a, in a caravan with limited space, a great option to have a lay down one. Because if you obviously lift it up, it's not too much higher, but sometimes that might be the difference. Just gonna whack this on now, because we're about 40, 40 odd percent. Um, the washing machine's on, on the inverter, so it'll be chewing a bit more. And today, it's actually clearing up a bit more than what it was. I've noticed around since being in Cairns, it normally starts out really overcast. And then by about sort of nine, 10 o'clock, it finds up. We're leaving here tomorrow. We've got family, well, two families meeting up with us that we're going to the Cape with. They're gonna turn up this afternoon. Not sure what time, but they'll spend the night here and then we'll all pack up and then we'll head north again from here together. And we'll be together for the next week or two or three, however long we want to take to uh, do the tip. So yeah, exciting stuff. So I'll work this journey on real quick and we'll, uh, we'll get it going. So you can see there, he's filming the generator. But anyway, he's just put that on. So if we come and have a look up in here, this is where our battery manager system is. Um, we've got 38%, six hours until full. Uh, so we've got basically the generator working here and some solar as well, but it's only 18.5 volts, which is a shame. I don't know, this is what our problem is. It won't go up past that point, even when it needs to charge. Uh, then here we've got so 32 amps coming in through the BMS which is the combination of the generator and the solar. 18.1 is going to power because I've got this washing machine running which is also on the inverter but we've also got 27 going into the battery so it's pretty cool. Five hours until full. If the inverter wasn't running I reckon that that would probably be charging a bit faster but I don't really know, we haven't tried it enough with the generator. So when the washing machine's done, I'm gonna turn the inverter off and then we'll just let it charge because there's not really much other power going on in here at the moment. Um, so it's, what's the time? 8.39 in the morning and we have 38% and it says six hours until full at this stage. So we'll see how we go. simple setup with this one on and off for the actual Jenny itself so flick that on and it has two modes so it's got an eco so, um, eco mode and it's got a full ball mode so basically I think he said the guy at the shop if it's on eco it's running at about a thousand um, and if you ramp it up you get the full two so depending on how quickly and how what how much you want uh, you can determine with that that switch there uh, fuel on and off very similar to like a mower or a whipper snipper or whatnot. So we flick that down. Cable's plugged in. On the back we got a choke to so pull that out. And then literally. All done. So at full no at eco mode you get up to eight hours running time. And if you flick that little button over to full full ball, you get about four hours out of it. So fair bit of running time there. It's 4.2 liters of petrol. And that'll get you those eight and a half, that eight and the four liters out of those two switches. So pretty impressive for such a small little machine. Uh, for we got a 20 liter jerry can that we've got on the back. So we should get four top ups out of that on eco, which is really, really handy. So yeah, really cool. So I thought I'd give you a quick update. It is now uh, 1 15 p.m. And if I show you this, we're at 78%. It says four hours until full. We've got bulk solar and bulk 240 as well. 
although it's not really using the 240 because it'll be utilizing the solar, I guess. But still, we're drawing a hell of a lot into the actual caravan itself, 10 amps thereabouts, and that's because all day I've had this little inverter going because here I'm doing some editing. So this is our next episode going up. It's my quiet day. The generator is still out there running. It's doing a really good job. Hasn't stopped, hasn't faulted, hasn't had an issue. It's been a good day. I'll have to do the maths and put it in the bottom of the screen as to what it's grown by because I can't remember. I've looked at so much today my brain is like fuzz. But yeah, if we get to 100% I'll let you know. But if not, what, what was it? 75? Oh, 78%. That's still pretty good considering I think I told you about it at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we've done a fair bit of charging and a fair bit of using. I've done two loads of washing and as I said, the inverter's been running all day because of my computer and also because of the washing machine. So it's not bad. I've decided there's a little track literally across from our site and it makes well it sends you down to the river and apparently at the moment with uh, this time of year it's breeding season for crocodiles um, so old mate that owns the place has put up some fences and he said do not go past the fences but you can go down and have a look but he reckons there is a ton of crocodiles just out and about everywhere because it's breeding season obviously so there's going to be a lot around so i thought oh bug it we'll go down and have a look we've got to have a look before we leave because we leave tomorrow um oh excuse me so me jack and uh sean getting their little full drive in and uh, come down and have a look here it is even with that fence i don't want to go any closer <laughs> Definitely looks like uh, croc infested water. Pretty heavy duty gate. There's something moving under the water over there. Look, you can see it. Do you see all those ripply bits? There's quite a few in there. I don't know if it's logs or what, but there's a big one there. The water goes over top. Oh, I just don't want to risk it. <laughs> makes you want to throw like a big chunk of meat in there and just see what happens you probably get an understanding of how plastic it could look and then next minute it's like BAM! Crocodiles everywhere mm. Mm. So it's pretty tight in here as you can see and I was just saying to Sean that she is now officially the first person to put scratches on this car. <laughs> this is the tightest truck yeah. we've ever driven in this car. The yeah. car was screaming. This is a far better setup. You should be able to see something from here. Surely. Unless they heard us coming with the screaming trees. Ooh. Chris reckons that, I can't quite see it on the GoPro, it's like right there-ish somewhere. It's like, is that eyes? I feel a bit safer at this one because it's quite a big drop down. There's like a good metre and a half there. That's it, Jack. Call them in. Call them in. Eee! What's that one? It's a log. Is it? Yeah. It's a confirmed log. Could have put a drone down. I think it's a croc footage. Well, you still could. Yeah. Oh, babe, whatever that thing was that was over there that you were pointing at, oh, it's cool. gone. It probably was. Yeah, it probably was. There you go. I've seen us and he's disappeared. Or he's on his way over to chomp himself a meal. Dad. He's not going to get a meal here. We're too hot. You hope, there. but then how deep is that? It's pretty deep. Yeah, so they got a bit of leeway on them. Yeah, I'm good. I'm going back here. Can you come back here a bit, please? <laughs> Ugh, I hate them. Almost, uh, yeah, it must be. <coughs> you wouldn't want to put that too far in, would you? This bit's tight. Look. It's both sides of the car. Nothing like oh the God. scream of scratches on a car. 
Look, it goes too tight on the roof here too. The virginity of the car has now been taken. I'm kind of glad I got to do it. Well, I'm <laughs> glad you way. got to do it because I reckon I would have got far more <laughs> attacked about it. Yeah, well, now you can do it and it won't be the end of the world, I guess. Mm. Far out. Sorry, Jack. Jack doesn't know how to take all these branches coming through the <laughs> window. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Oh my god, babe. Can you believe it? We're finally heading to the Cape. And it's not long before we have our first caravan issues. And Sean is in the wars again. It's all good though. We get to explore some awesome areas on the way to Weeper and celebrate a special birthday. 